All right, so this is you. Imagine it's the middle of winter. It's dark outside, it's cold, and quite frankly, you're you're feeling kind of lonely. I mean, they do call it cuffing season for a reason. Am I right? But anyways, you're on the hunt to find a sidekick. Somebody who can keep you company all throughout the winter. You'll do anything besides talk to that cute girl you see at the gym or your work. Instead, you try your luck on Tinder. I mean, what's the worst that can happen, right? You're a little hesitant at first, but you go ahead and you say, F it, I'll take that leap of faith. And you do it anyways. You think to yourself, maybe, I might even get laid. And if you get rejected, hey, it's no big deal. I mean, it was just on an app anyways. It doesn't really matter. It wasn't real life. So you spend hours creating that perfect profile. You know, I'm talking a catchy bio, some photos with your friends, maybe one with your pet. And to top it all off, something adventurous so you can stand out amongst the other hundreds of dudes. All right, so this human behavior is quite simple. From a biological standpoint, especially as humans, we're meant to reproduce. That's the overall end goal of human existence, which is to reproduce and continue the bloodline. Well, according to science, that is. See, think about it like this. When you're trying to achieve a goal, there's always gonna be pain points associated with it. We're gonna call those obstacles. An example is, let's say you wanna be a doctor. Well, you're first gonna have to go to school, you're gonna have to do eight years of schooling, and then you're gonna have to finish all the exams. And by the end of it, you're gonna have to pay off all the student loans, which is gonna take a long time. So naturally, as a human, we like to take the path of least resistance. Meaning, how do we achieve our goals while avoiding the most pain points as possible? And that's where these dating apps come into play. With the promise of a brighter future and more success with women right at your fingertips, who would pass up on an opportunity like that? So you're swiping and you're getting a couple matches here and there. You're feeling good. Matter of fact, you're feeling like a kid in a candy store. Finally, you can get a taste of that dirty, stinky hole you've always wanted. But as you continue your journey, you start to realize most of your matches didn't even open your messages. And the ones that did, well, you're basically talking to yourself in her DMs. See, this is the reality for most men who use these dating apps. While these dating apps like Hinge claim their app is quote unquote designed to be deleted, do these apps really wanna help you find love like they claim they do? Or do they have a more sinister plan? Maybe a financial incentive. Are these apps preying on the pockets of lonely men? All right, so throughout this video, we're actually gonna explore data on why women have a much easier time with online dating as opposed to their male counterparts. We'll specifically take a look at what characteristics and qualities women look for before deciding to match with somebody. And by the end of this video, you'll have the information on how to increase your market value, if you choose to or not, but that's gonna be up to you. I see a lot of men destroy their online dating profile, and it's not entirely because of the way you look. According to a study, researchers used eye tracking technology to determine what men and women look at first when viewing a dating profile. They found that women tend to look at the background. Why? Because they're looking for signs of wealth. In the dating world, especially the red pill community, this behavior is known as hypergamy. It's an instinctual desire of a woman to find and retain a man of high value. It only makes sense as this biological desire guarantees the survival of the woman and her offspring. So I'd suggest you stop taking those mere bathroom selfies or get really good at Photoshop. Now, since we're on the topic of hypergamy, this theory is further backed by science. Throughout human history, only 40% of men have reproduced, while women, 80% have reproduced. This means that every three out of five men you see on the streets will have an extinct bloodline and their family lineage will be lost. And dating apps follow a similar trend. According to data directly from Tinder on how many women swipe right versus how many men swipe right. So if you've never been on Tinder like I've never been on Tinder, swiping right basically just means, hey, I'm interested in that person. Swiping left, no interest. When it comes down to men, men swipe right 53% of the time. That means, hey, I'm interested. And they reject 47% of the profiles. Meanwhile, women, brace for impact, all right? Women swipe right only 5% of the time, and the other 95% are rejection. Now I've got some more devastating news. So let's say you're a guy who's maybe an eight out of 10 on the attractive scale, and you're in the top, you know, 20% of looks. You'd expect to be able to attract, uh, you know, a woman who's also like an eight, right? Well, take a look at this chart we found. Now it looks a little bit overwhelming at first, but you know, stay with me here. Now take a look at the left-hand side, it says male attractiveness, while on the bottom, female attractiveness. Now what this chart represents is depending on your attractiveness, what percentage of 
women are available to you. Remember from the statistics earlier, only 5% of women swipe right. A male in the 80th percentile of looks has only access to 20% of the women. But if you're a woman in the bottom 20%, you'll still have access to 80% of the men. And one of the biggest hurdles for men, especially on the online dating market, is that there's simply just more men than women on these dating apps. So I was able to gather some gender data from Tinder and Bumble, two of the most popular dating apps in the world. And the men outrank the women three to one. So for every one woman with a dating profile, there are three men. Are dating apps hopeless? Should you just give up? At first, these statistics might make online dating seem intimidating and almost a lost cause. But meeting online is actually one of the most common ways couples reported meeting nowadays. So the bottom line is dating apps do work. And one of my cousins even got married and has a kid all because of a super like. Overall, if you can learn anything from this video, I hope that it made you realize that women tend to be a little bit more hypergamous and selective. As this video is wrapping up, you'll be divided into one of two groups. The first group, although presented with this information, will do absolutely nothing and they'll stay a loser on the bottom of the food chain or you'll be a part of group two. You'll take this information and you'll attempt to work hard to become the best version of yourself. Whichever path you choose, both will be painful. You'll either suffer the pain of being invisible and unimportant or the pain of trying to be somebody great. Good luck.